problem number 8 a 25 MBA 11 kV three phase generator has a subtraction reactance of 20 percentage the generator supplies two motors or a transmission line with transformer at both ends as shown below the motors have rated input of 15 and 7.5 MBA both 10 kilo volt with 25 percentage subtraction reactances the three phase transformers are rated 30 MBA 10.8 by 121 kV delta star with leakage reactance of 10 percentage. The series reactance of the line is 100 ohm. Calculate the fault current when a single line to ground fault occurs at F. The motors are loaded to draw 15 and 7.5 megawatt at 10 kV and 0.8 power factor leading. Assume the negative sequence reactance is equal to positive sequence reactance. The zero sequence reactances are mentioned in the figure. Neglect the resistances. So this is the given power system networks. The network there are two motors, motor one and two. Okay. So note that the neutral point of generator and the neutral point of motor two are grounded through current limiting reactances X. Okay. So in the zero sequence network, you have to include three X. And we know for the transformer all the three sequence reactances will be the same x1 x2 x0 okay and coming to the generator they had mentioned a subtransition reactance which is the positive sequence reactance so consider the subtransition reactance as x1 similarly for the transformer leakage reactance is given so that is the value of x1 x2 and x0 okay and they had given the negative sequence reactance is equal to the positive sequence reactance okay for generator motor and the transmission line so here all the machine ratings are given and the reactance values are in per unit so we are going to choose a common base and with respect to the common base we are going to calculate the new per, per unit values okay so with respect to the transformer we divide the sections into three and in section one the generator rating is chosen as the common base 25 MVA 11 KV. So now the transformer rating is 10.8 by 121 KV. Okay. So section 2 KV is 11 into transformation ratio of transformer 1 which is 123.2 KV. In the same way for section 3 it is section 2 KV into transformation ratio of transformer 2 which is 11 KV. So now we got the base values of the three sections so now calculate the sequence reactances of the various components so the subtransition reactance of the generator is given as 20 percentage which should be taken as x1 also given negative sequence reactance is equal to the positive sequence reactance so that is why i have taken x1 is equal to x2 is equal to 20 percentage which is j.2 per unit and x0 it's mentioned in the power system network which is j.06 per unit okay since the generator ratings are cho chosen as the common base there is no change in the per unit values new and old per unit values will be the same so current limiting reactance or the neutral reactance is j2.5 ohm in per unit it is actual by base okay so we get j.517 per unit so 3 into xn is 3 into j.517 which is j1.55 per unit. Now let's calculate the new per unit values of transformer 1. So for transformers x1, x2, x0 everything is equal to 10 percentage which is j.1. So the new value of the sequence reactances are old value into mvab new by mvab old into kvb old by kvb new the whole square which is j.0803 per unit transformer two sequence reactants okay so calculate x1 is equal to x2 this is x2 is equal to x0 using the same formula we got it as j.0803 per unit so if you look on to both the transformers we have the same value j.0803 j.0803 because both the transformers are of similar ratings okay similar rated transformers so the new per unit values also will be the same coming to the sequence reactance calculation of the transmission line 
x1 and x2 is equal to j100 ohm which is in actual units so x1 and x2 in per unit is actual by base base value is kvb square by mvab of section 2 transmission line section we got this j.165 per unit so x0 is j300 ohm zero sequence reactance x0 in per unit is actual by base we get it as j.494 per unit now calculate the sequence reactance of motor 1 so given the subtransition reactance is 25 percentage so subtransition reactance is nothing but positive sequence reactance x1 and also mentioned in the problem consider negative sequence reactance equal to the positive sequence reactance so that is why we have considered x1 is equal to x2 is equal to j.25 per unit and x0 is j.06 per unit okay so this is the old per unit value calculate the new per unit value using the same formula j.344 per unit we got it as j.344 per unit in the same way calculate the new per unit value of zero sequence reactants x0 j.083 per unit now sequence reactants of motor 2 x1 x2 is equal to 25 percentage which is j.25 per unit x0 is j.06 per unit and the neutral of motor 2 is having a current limiting reactants or neutral reactants xn is j2.5 ohms now calculate the new per unit values x1 x2 new is equal to j.689 per unit x0 new is j.165 per unit xn in per unit is equal to xn actual by xn base okay so base is kvb square by mvab so motor comes in section 3 so consider the base values of section 3 okay so we got xn as j.517 per unit 3xn is equal to 3 into j.517 which is equal to j1.55 per unit okay so now for all the components in the given power system network we have calculated the new per unit values with respect to the common base which is a generator ratings so now for calculating the fault current first step is to draw the positive negative and zero sequence network so let us draw the positive sequence network emf of the generator x1 of generator okay this is x1 of transformer 1 x1 of transmission line this is x1 of transformer 2 x1 of motor 1 x1 of x1 of motor 2 em2 em1 okay so remember in the given power system network the fault occurrence is after the secondary of transformer 1 okay so in the secondary terminals of the transformer 1 fault occurs okay so in the previous problem previous two problems the fault occurs at the midpoint of the transmission line so we have divided the transmission line reactants into two halves but here in the given network power system network the fault is after the secondary of transformer 1 okay so no need to divide the transmission line reactants right as such so this is the positive sequence network so we know after drawing the positive sequence network you have to draw the corresponding thevenin's equivalent positive sequence network for which we need vpf as well as z1 equivalent so how to calculate vpf you have to draw the given type of fault at the fault point okay so it is a single line to ground fault so i have shorted the fault occurring point with respect to the reference ground so the voltage at that point is vpf okay and it is uh, the load is motor so it will draw current im so note down the current direction it is im okay and the voltage at the terminals of the motor is vm so we write the kvl equation for this loop so pre-fault voltage vpf is equal to vm plus im into j.165 plus j.0803 okay 
so what is how to calculate the pre fault voltage or the thevenin's voltage represent the type of fault at the fault point so here it is a short circuit fault single line to ground fault that's why i have shorted the line with respect to the reference ground and mark the voltage at the fault terminals as vpf okay so by applying kvl for this loop it is vpf is equal to vm plus im into this two impedances so now we have to calculate im and we have to calculate vm in per unit okay so that we will get vpf in per unit because these two impedances are in per unit okay so what is vm in per unit vm actual by vm base so what is the actual voltage of the motor so given in the question the motor load draws certain power i think there are two motors one is 15 megawatt and the other one is uh, uh, 7.5 megawatt the two motor rated ratings are 15 and 7.5 megawatts it draws 15 and 7.5 megawatts at point a power factor leading at 10 kilo volt okay so the rated voltage actual voltage is 10 sorry the actual voltage is 10 kilo volt okay and 11 kv is the base voltage of the motor section 11 kv is the base voltage of the motor section so 0.909 at an angle 0 degree per unit okay so we have taken motor voltage as the reference so with respect to the voltage at the motor terminals vm the current through the motor the desim leads the voltage by 0.8 so now let us calculate the actual value of current okay so actual value of current is calculated from the actual power drawn so im actual is equal to pm divided by root 3 vl cos 5 so there are two motors so the total power drawn by both the motors is 15 plus 7.5 15 plus 7.5 into 10 to the power 6 we are converting megawatt into watt divided by root 3 into 10 kilo volt converting that into volt into 0.8 which is the power factor cos 5 so we got it as 1623.85 amperes okay so while substituting the actual values you should be very very careful see listen here for vm in per unit v actual by v base what is v actual that is the actual power drawn by the motor at 10 kv the actual power is 15 plus 7.5 Actual voltage is 10 kV, so the current cor cor uh, current corresponding to that 15 plus 7.5 megawatt at 10 kV should be the actual current drawn by the motor. Okay. So now, I M base I M base is equal to root 1000 into M V A B divided by root 3 into K V B. Okay. So motor comes in section three. So substitute the values of MVAB and KVB of motor section, which is section three, which is twenty five MVA eleven KV. So we have IM base is thousand three hundred and twelve point two amperes. So now IM per unit is one point two three eight per unit, which is only the magnitude. So in complex form, IM is equal to IM at an angle plus cos inverse point eight. Why plus cos inverse point eight? Because it is leading power factor. Okay. So in the previous problem it was lagging power factor, so we took it as minus. So here it is leading power factor, so plus cos inverse point eight. So we'll get one point two three eight angle thirty six point eight seven degree per unit. So now find out the pre fault voltage V P F is equal to V M plus I M into these two impedances. We have V P F is equal to point seven six six at an angle eighteen point four degree per unit. Okay. Next, calculate Z one equivalent. Okay, so this is the two reactances to the left side of fault point. So this is the reactances at the right hand side of the fault point. So we have J point one six five in series with J point zero eight zero three. Then the two motor reactances, two motors are in parallel. That's why I have taken the parallel formula. Okay. So is it one equivalent is J one point one seven six per unit. So now with the VPF in series with is it one equivalent, draw the Thevenin equivalent positive sequence network. So this is the Thevenin's equivalent positive sequence network. So next let us go for negative sequence network. We should not show the voltage sources in the negative sequence network. This is the 
x2 of generator x2 of transformer 1 x2 of transmission line x2 of transformer 2 x2 of motor 1 x2 of motor 2 okay so find out z2 equivalent so this two are in series this two are in series this two are in parallel so if you consider this right hand side of the fault point we have the parallel combination of this two in series with this two okay so that's what i have written over here so the z2 equivalent is j.176 per unit so we draw the thevenin equivalent negative sequence network which has only one equivalent impedance okay coming to the zero sequence network you should check for the transformer configuration as well as the neutral grounding of all the star points okay so what is this x not of generator what is this 3xn of generator x not of transformer 1 this is x not of transmission line x not of transformer 2 this is x not of x not of motor 1 x not of motor 2 this is 3xn of motor 2 okay so now let's check the configuration of this transformer 1 primary side is delta that's why the series switch is open shunt is closed star solid grounding close the series switch coming to this transformer 2 star solid grounding close the series switch this is delta open the series switch close the shunt switch okay coming to this motor 1 it is star with ungrounded neutral that's why we have open circuit over here okay we have open circuit over here so now what is the equivalent impedance of the zero sequence network so since here we have open here also open there is no path for the current okay so there is no voltage drop across all these reactances so all these reactances which is beyond the fault point will become redundant so in the equivalent impedance calculation we have this reactance in parallel with the series combination of this two okay so we have is it not equivalent as j.07 per unit so now draw thevenin's equivalent zero sequence network which has only is it not equivalent so now we have the three thevenin equivalent zero sequence networks given fault is lg fault we connect all the three equivalent sequence networks in series Thevenin's positive sequence, Thevenin's equivalent negative sequence and Thevenin's equivalent zero sequence network in series. Okay. So from this what is IA1? VPF divided by Z1 plus Z2 plus Z0. Substitute the values from the network 1.815 at an angle minus 71.6 degree per unit. So the magnitude of fault current for LG fault is 3 into magnitude of IA1 which is 3 into 1.815 which is 5.445 per unit. So since the generator ratings are given, not only really generator ratings, all the common ratings are given, we can calculate the fault current in actual units. For that, we need the base current in the fault section. So fault occurs in the transmission line section. Okay, so after the secondary of transformer 1, that is transmission line section. Section 2 base values you have to consider. Okay, so we got IBS 117.16 amperes. So fault current in ampere is equal to per unit fault current into base current in the fault section. So we got fault current as 637.94 amperes.